So, uh, what's that? And I do. <laughs> Some of you, right? Mine, sometimes it's fun. Like sometimes it's you. It's like really fun to do something that it, like gets like a lot of uh, attention for a short period of time. Um, so in Chicago, we have there's like under, we are undergoing one of the we are undertaking one of the largest uh, public infrastructure projects since we since we reversed the flow of the Chicago River, mm -hmm. which is the uh, deep tunnel. Basically, there's this enormous under uh, man-made underground reservoir that we're building, and it's just it's really just incredible, and very few people kind of really know about it, particularly since 9/11. Um, there's like that's sort of there's a very significant drop off on how publicized this thing was. Uh, it's just uh, and what this thing is trying to do is that uh, in Chicago in the Chicago region we have a very old it's an old it's a pretty old city and one of the one of the one of the one of the things that that means is that the sewer system and the wastewater system are often tied together. And so when it rains a lot, it overwhelms uh, the wastewater system that runs into the sewage system, and it overwhelms the sewage system. And, when, and by overwhelms, it means it comes out of the sewer system. Raw sewage comes out of the sewer system and into the Chicago River. Uh, this is not a healthy thing. <laughs> uh, and Chicago has been sued repeatedly by the EPA to clean this up. Like, like they get, you know, they get, but you know, the, but this, the, the city basically says, like, we're working on it. It's very expensive. Suing us, you know, like, what do you want us to do? I mean, uh, I mean, and they are, they're, they're working on it, but it still doesn't, it doesn't stop the EPA from suing us, right? Uh, so this is like, you know, this is like a kind of important thing that's happening in Chicago, but like very, but you don't see it because it's underground and it has to do with, you know, shit. So, <laughs> uh, but it's still, it's interesting and important. So like, you could maybe think about like one way of dramatizing this issue is by, you know, making a website that had the URL. <laughs> <laughs> or dot com or dot org or dot org right because <laughs> <laughs> they're shooting the Chicago River dot com right you know they could just be yes or no right you know and then like maybe you could go on and explain some interesting things about TARP you would definitely get some real buzz about this I so an IO domain would be better <laughs> <laughs> so like how would you get that how would you get that? so you would go how would you, where is the data that you need to drive that site that data is Somewhere. Maybe I can tell this. So I think the category is poop. So if you just search for that. Line 70. Line 70. Line 70. Yeah. No, that's not it. No. It's just work. It's not watering. It's almost this one. Is it water watch? Forty-five. No. Nope. That's right. N W R D. Yes. Ah, uh, here we go. Is this? Okay. So this event, when this when it gets overflowed. And it goes into the Chicago River. It's called a combined sewer overflow event. Uh, oh yeah, right. CSOs. So, <laughs> so this uh, this is a data on one of our independent agencies, right? The Metropolitan Water Reclamation District of Greater Chicago is something that you guys vote for, the members of, right? You know, it's a very impressive, important, and uh, little attended. Uh, <laughs> And one of their, I mean, I think, I'm not even sure on the history, I think there's some EPA, as part of one of the many EPA lawsuits, they, they're required to do, to create a plan to notify the public of when there is a CSO event. And this is part of that effort. So, let's see here. 
by the way, don't feel bad if you didn't know about this website. The, the, the district itself probably doesn't know they have this website. Only Derek knows it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is like, so after everyone, after every event, there's like a synopsis of the event. And basically this is like, there's like a whole bunch of pipes where that can come out of, and these are the pipes. And then like they have another part of the website where it tells you where these things are. So you could like imagine already like just a, you know, kind of a, map of the kind of waterways and then at a particular point you get a notice and then it kind of goes the water kind of changes color down <laughs> <laughs> so you see there the tar connection database is what you would need in order to find the locations of these yeah. uh, so then it's like yeah so this tells you it tells you when it started you know, how long it lasted and a water segment so this is kind of historical uh, but if you want to know if something's going on right now you go to uh, status, and you see this is like this is up to date. They make a map every day. They make a map constantly, right? So this is like you know this is so there's no everything is fine today. Find us a proof date. Okay. <laughs> so there is like an event here. So there's a it came, it came out here and it came out here and I'm not I don't quite know yet the logic why these are segment names, right? So the one thing that you so one thing that you could do if you wanted to try your site is you would look at this and you'd be like okay well let's actually dive in this a little bit more uh, and like let's just look at this frame in particular. All right, and then um, what this actually is is a composite image. There are three images, three and thirteen. <laughs> so, like, if this is basically a blue map with an overlap, with an overlay of uh, image for three and an image for thirteen, and you would just check to huh. see which of those images were there, and that would tell you the segment, right? Right. Uh, they also send out an email notification for these things, and so that's another way that you could drive. A website that actually has basically the same information as this. Uh, there's a bunch of other stuff that uh, there are other resources out here that you know, if you really want to get fancy, there's information, real time information on how much it's raining. And raining is basically it. Like if it rains more than a certain amount, there's going to be one of these events, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and then, but there's also information about like how much it's raining in the different regions, the flow, like how fast the different parts of the river are flowing, and lots of stuff. Like you could really kind of build something up for this, like really. Dramatize this kind of constant issue in Chicago that, like, maybe some of you didn't even know about before coming in, but now it's like, oh, okay, well, this is we're spending a lot of money to try to stop this from happening, and it could be interesting, right? Mm -hmm. So, can we talk about the ethical implications of pointing this out, right? Like, so you mentioned the EPA sues Chicago all the time, right? right. And, and, and for what reason, right? Like, to make them work faster, to make them build this project any faster, would making this website actually have positive effects? Yeah, so this is like this is a contrast, right, to the previous website where I think you could actually, I think you could imagine a number of useful, productive things that this would have. And this would really more, but be, this would be kind of a news piece, right? You know, this is what this is doing. No one is, people aren't swimming in the Chicago River now. They're not going to change their behavior, uh, <laughs> like, on the basis of this thing, right? People so the road in there, though. People do use the river. Yeah. There's a bunch of rowboats and shit. Okay, so all well, right. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, but I think I think for the most part, people know that the Chicago River is a gross thing that they shouldn't have on their body, and uh, <laughs> and so like I don't really think it's going to be changed. Like it's not. It's hard for me to really. It may be the case, but I can't think of people right now for whom this is going to be. This is going to actually change their course of action. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for certain parts of the river, which actually like lead out to the lake. Would contamination in those parts of the river have an effect on like people on a beach? Yeah. So there's no. So you're saying like. No, no, it all flows. It all flows. Okay. Yeah, actually, 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 it does. It does. It does. Yeah. If it's if it gets to be like a lot of rain. Okay. Then they dump it straight into like especially up near Evanston oh, here. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, where it's pumping stations. Mm -hmm. That's why so, a lot of those beaches are closed after. Because they re-reverse the river. Happened last summer. Yeah, happened too. Especially on this really heavy rain. Okay. Well, so I mean, like, if this is you. Know, you need to get more into it. Maybe, the, maybe this is like. So the thing is, is that the city is actually doing a, a really tremendous job uh, uh, modeling and, and doing some really good stuff about uh, uh, doing some really cool stuff about uh, the lake water quality. 
already. And so, I don't know. I mean, I, I think that we might be seeing, I mean, so that's already driving, it's already like last year, the city, the park departments launched a new site. Uh, like, if you, you might remember that they, they stopped, uh, they stopped closing uh, beaches for the entire day. And like it said, kind of give like a like hour by hour, uh, uh, like status about like what what's the water quality, and that's based upon some really interesting work that the park district has been doing with like, the U.S. Geological Service on modeling the quality of the river in ways that allow them to do that in a real time thing. And I I hope that some of that data might be coming out and being available for us to play with maybe next year. When you look at data presented the way that it is on this website, it's not very conducive to actually creating anything without, am I right in saying that, that you would have to go back and really make man, go back and manually make your own table? Because you had to actually click on the date yeah. and then, you know, it wasn't just like in a CSV or no, something. No, no, so here's, here's the, I mean, I'm not saying it's easy, and that's the whole point, is all this stuff is, all this stuff is like a real pain in the ass, so you need to have a fucking good use case about what you're doing in the first place. But like here's, the, like, here's a link date, right? Yeah. You know what today's date is, you just fill that in, that gives you your current day, you watch that all day, and see if, like, you, you know, like, check it every 10 minutes, which is easy for computers to do, and see if any of these things change, right? I mean, I'm not like, it's not, like I mean, like is it like the is it a, is it awesome? No, but like will it definitely will it drive your website totally? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How reliable are you finding these sorts of like backends to be? Because you sort of seem to be saying that I don't know. Is this all automated, or is it just like a guy like you who's doing all this, and we're just relying on that guy? Press well, the you know, I mean, the, the all this. dark secret is is that. There's always a guy. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like and there are guys I mean, going up to work. All these businesses I mean, and you know, the websites down. Is it that like forever. some some of the stuff that the city is beginning to pull under our feel like it's the sensors now, and so like then you just have to trust those the guys and girls who built the sensors. But like you know, like if you fall if you like keep on pulling the thread, you're going to end up with someone who's entering this data or designing the system. And like, do you trust them? And that's like, so the question is not like, and that's like, it's not the wrong, it's the wrong question, right? The wrong question is, is that like, I mean, ultimately, yeah, people make mistakes. The question is like, how does it perform, right? You know, I mean like, and that's how you should evaluate it. Not that like it was done by a person because it's all done, everything we do is done by people, right? I mean, so the thing is, is like, it's always this, this kind of working this way is actually maybe better like it keeps that in mind, like it, it's easier to keep that in mind. When you look at the data portal, you're like, ah, oh, yes, this has been so processed, right? But it's still, there's still ultimately people who put it in, there's ultimately a guy, right? It's the exact same. <laughs> that little script that you're gonna write, they wrote and you pull it from some database, the data portal. Yeah. Yeah. Except when the shit hits the fan, he, Tom doesn't sleep that night. Yeah, who is this guy? Yeah. Or a lady, yeah, who's this guy? <laughs> I mean, there, 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 there are civil servants. I mean, there's like, there, the, like, so. I mean, I, I don't know the people who do this, but the people who, like, for the business license stuff. I mean, it's the people who, there, it's the, it's their, it's their civil servants who process the business applications and they put it into their system. And sometimes they, they usually do a great job of that, and sometimes they make a mistake, right? You know, I mean, like, it's, it's, it's like this is the product of our, of our various bureaucracies. Which is made up of systems, existing data flows, and like people within those within that are embedded in both of those.